Okay, everybody, we're back. Thanks for tuning back in. Now, what I've gone ahead and done here is I have taken um, one cup of walnuts and I put them in a pan and I just toss them until they were nice and toasted over the, my range, okay? So I just toasted some walnuts, one cup, and they, until, you know, they started toasting up and smelling really great. Now they've cooled a little bit and I'm just gonna give them a chop here. And this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna provide a wonderful nutty flavor to this carrot cake. Now, this is something that I kind of added um, with toasting the walnuts. Some recipes call for it and some recipes don't. Uh, but this is one of the things that I added into my existing carrot cake recipe was the toasted chopped walnuts. And I toast them whole and then I chop them afterwards. Now you can do it either way. If you've got some chopped walnuts in your pantry, just go ahead and use those. But toast them a little bit in the frying pan first. You don't need to grease your frying pan ahead of time, okay folks? Just go ahead and put them in a dry pan and then turn on the burner to high and then just keep tossing them. Just give them a little shake just until they start toasting on the outside of the edge. And that's what you want. Now, there is nothing like the flavor of a toasted walnut in something as de decadent as this carrot cake. It's going to be so delicious. You're just going to love it. All right. So it almost smells like popcorn to me. I don't know why. Every time I toast um, nuts of any kind, they just it smells like popcorn. So maybe because it's a nut and like a corn has a shell too or something like that. But I just find that it just adds so much flavor to that recipe. Now I've gone ahead and turned my oven on to 350 degrees. So that is preheating now. And I have taken three eight inch cake pans and I've sprayed the inside of them and lined them with parchment paper and then sprayed the parchment paper and then dusted it all, the whole inside with flour, okay? So that just provides a nice non-stick surface for your now. When I make regular cakes and things like that, sometimes I use parchment paper and spray. Sometimes I just use um, shortening or Crisco and I'll line the whole thing with Crisco and then dust it with flour and just tap out the access. So whatever you want to do is totally up to you. If you don't have any parchment paper, then just um, either spray or lightly um, wipe the insides of your cake pan with Crisco and then go ahead and put some flour in and just dust it all around the sides, tap it around the sides and in the bottom and then just discard the excess that's in there. So you want to make sure that there isn't a whole lot of flour left in the bottom of your pan because you don't want that all over your cakes. Okay, there we go. So we've got the toasted walnuts here. We're gonna be using those in just a minute. So I've had the mixture, the egg mixture, the eggs and the sugar and the vanilla and the crushed pineapple and the zest all in this bowl here. And it's very well incorporated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take these carrots and I'm going to mix the carrots into the wet mixture of the eggs. I didn't want to plop them all in there all at once because I didn't want a big splash and a big mess. Definitely not a big mess. Not that I mind, but I just didn't want to clean it up too much. Like I said before, we're going to stir in all of these ingredients that are left. So the mixer has gone away until we make the frosting. So don't forget to tune in for the cream cheese frosting recipe. That would be yummy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the remaining carrot mixture into my egg mixture. Now you can see it right there. That's really looking yummy. Now you just wanna give this a stir. And now is when you are gonna start combining all of those dry ingredients that you sifted together. Now remember what we did, we did the three cups of flour and we sifted into that um, all together into the bowl. We combined the one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And then we did um, one teaspoon of salt. And then we sifted in also the four teaspoons of cinnamon. So 
What we're doing here, folks, is we're just folding this in. Now to fold in, you scoop around and up. That is a fold, okay? So if, you, if you're not sure what it is, it's not this, okay? You don't wanna beat it to death. All we're doing is we're folding in these, wet, these dry ingredients to the wet mixture. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more. I'll just shake it in just a little bit so you can see it. I'm kind of doing this in about three parts. I split the bowl eye-wise, eye I just kind of eyed it. And I'm gonna do this in three parts. So I put in the first third, this is the second third, and then we're gonna put in the last part in just a minute. This smells so great, everyone. Oh my goodness. I am so excited to taste this. Because you know that there's gonna be a little trimming needed on this cake, so. I'll have to test that out just to make sure it's gonna be okay for him. So today's my husband's birthday and I asked him, I said, okay, Pete, what would you like for, for your birthday, for your cake? Well, if you remember, uh, I think it was last week, last Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, I did a um, apple caramel cheesecake. Well, he decided that that's what he wanted for his, for his birthday. So this morning, I woke up and really early, and after he went to work, um, I started making that cheesecake. So that is down in the refrigerator, chilling downstairs in our downstairs refrigerator. And so that will be all ready for his dinner tonight. So, or his, his uh, birthday dinner, his birthday dessert, I should say. He's gonna have, I'm gonna make a lasagna tonight for his, Lasagna with pepperoni is his favorite. He loves lasagna with pepperoni in it. So I'm gonna make a lasagna and then we're gonna be ready, ready to go there, so. All right, I think this is all folded in. Oh my goodness. All right, take a look at this, everyone. Isn't that looking delicious? Amazing, I love it. All right, last but not least is the chopped toasted walnuts. So we're gonna go ahead and put in one handful and fold that in. Now I know this is a lot of arm work everyone, but if you're gonna eat this cake, you're gonna need to do a workout beforehand because this is not low calorie by any way, shape, or form. I apologize for that. Although you have carrots in it, it's healthy. It's got natural nuts, right? Never mind the sugar that we threw in it. And it's got the pineapple. Never mind the sugar that was stored in, but hey. Like I said, it's a birthday. Birthdays are our excuses to, to cheat. So, and just stir everything by hand. And then, you know, your right arm will be, it'll be done. It'll be Dunsville and you'll be like, okay, I can't lift my arm, but I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. All right, the last of the nuts have gone in, everybody. And we are ready to put this in our cake pans. Now, like I said, if you wanna cut this recipe in half, absolutely go for it. If you want, if you're just doing like a small cake or you wanna just do maybe some, um, some muffins, some carrot cake muffins, and you don't wanna make all of this, then that's fine. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, just. You know, just cut it in half if you want to, and then you don't have to worry about it at all. So I'm just gonna kind of wipe down my board a little bit because I'm gonna kind of use this to have my, to put my cake pans on. So let me grab my cake pans over here. I have three eight inch cake pans. And like I said, I have sprayed them and dusted them with flour. And we're gonna go ahead and just pour this mixture in there. I'm so excited. I'm just eyeballing this. If you need to add more or less to, to one layer than the other, then you go for it. I just kind of let it rest for a minute just to see, okay, where do I need to add it? This first one, I did a good job on that one. So we'll add a little more to this one. And where we folded everything in, guys, everything's really even because um, we've, we've done a few good stirs on that. And then the last part, we're gonna give it to this one right here. All right. 
perfect. Now, this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven and this is gonna cook between 45 and 50 minutes. So keep an eye on it, like I've always said before. Depending on your oven, everyone's oven cooks differently. My oven cooks differently than the one down at our dance club, okay? So everything's different. <laughs> so after maybe 40 minutes or so, pop it open and check, check it, check it with a toothpick, okay? And when that toothpick comes out clean, that means these are done, all right? So I'm gonna pop these in, I'm gonna clean up here, and we're gonna get ready to make the frosting, so tune in for the cream cheese frosting, and then we'll be back to assemble it all together. We'll see you in a few minutes. 